Everyone should be aware of the game Raft, you know, being in the middle of the ocean and surviving on a raft. Sounds pretty intriguing until you see that it costs $20. So how hard can it be to make it ourselves in 2D and make it the coziest game to ever exist? Our stolen version of Raft is supposed to be a relaxing, chill game. So we made a simple ocean graphic first. We then proceeded to remodel the Raft, which obviously took a few hours to make, as you can see. And we also figured out that a tiny bit of lighting makes the game look a thousand times better. And it takes like 5 minutes to actually add it. With that included, there's also the possibility to make a night and day system, but we might include that at the end. This is how everything looks right now. We got a little animation of the ocean and some light and shadow. Looks pretty cozy to us so far, although still very empty. It was time to add our actual player, and we just took inspiration from this character called Maya. It's about the inside that matters, right? Our original character, Mayo, is now completely stranded on one little raft alone. Oh wait, there's also Roberto. He's the famous shark that makes her life miserable in the original game, but he's friendly in our version, for now. How Roberto moves is pretty simple. We made a quick move to random point method, which just gives you a random x and y position. Roberto then swims to these coordinates and the moment he reaches that point, he will be given a new random position to swim to. It's basically an endless cycle of doom for him. Everything up until this point was pretty basic and easy, but things get a lot harder from now on. We had a little fun with the speed of Roberto. But getting back to work, we added a breathing animation for Mayo, and he blinks occasionally. Probably the core mechanic of Raft is to expand your home. So that was the next step of our mission. Our first try of a building system is really simple. We just added a grid on top of the whole map, so you'll be able to place your planks in these spots. Well, it's the first try for a reason. The second try is definitely an improvement though. Your whole game doesn't go under when you place your plank, but it's still a bit buggy. After a while of debugging and softly crying, Mayo can now place planks and expand his home. There are those little gaps though, might not be so obvious, but we just think it looks better this way. The main problem was that you could place your planks wherever you wanted, which doesn't really make any sense. But after some genius coding on our part, we made it that you can only build your plank next to a already existing one. Finally moving on from the building system, we slapped some player movement onto Mayo. And turns out he's literally Jesus. He might be very very slow but it can walk over water which you probably can we unfortunately had to patch that but the next problem arrived he walks happily and then he just defies all laws of physics and starts to rotate but we just told him to knock it off and he walks normally now afterwards we tried to add a camera to follow Mayo, which seems like an easy enough task yeah, we need to fix that as well. After some more hours of coding, there are good and bad news. Good news, the major bugs are fixed, including the camera. Bad news are, there are still a billion things to do, and whatever this is. So we basically had to spend another day just debugging stuff. Alright, the next mechanic we need to add is actually getting resources somehow. Raft is kind of based around gathering stuff from the ocean. Recreating the hook system of Raft is pretty pain though. So we just made some cool looking logs that will be swimming in the ocean. It works. It seems more like an army of logs coming towards you than anything else, but it works. After postponing the hook system for a while, it was time to finally work on it. Instead of doing the graphics first, we had this little dot as a placeholder. Graphics are difficult to make, okay? We firstly implemented the throwing mechanic. Unity applied some weird physics to it though. The longer you held the cursor, the longer the hook would be thrown. It just felt kind of awkward to do that, so we changed it. The hook now goes exactly where the cursor is. Definitely more intuitive and right on the money. The basic mechanic is working now. You can set your hook out and retrieve it. Not really how it was intended, but it's a good start. It's kind of boring to just fish locks all the time, for no reason. So we added our next item to the game. Plastic. You know, because of all the terrible, terrible pollution. And it's an original raft game as well. The moment you've hooked two logs and two plastics, you can expand your raft. A counter of your items was added, that acts as your inventory, and we also slapped on some raft music in the background. Overall, the game looks a lot more polished now and it's almost done. We do have a few things left to do. Firstly, we need to finish the hook system. Add health, hunger and thirst bars and make it kind of survival-y. Roberto then needs a little update. He should be able to destroy part of the raft and make our lives a little bit harder. And at the end, we finally can make the night and day rhythm. And we will then have the most cozy game in existence. Starting off with the hook system, we just added some graphics. We drew the hook and with some unity line renderer magic, we created the actual rope. This might seem like the easiest task, but it just looked completely scuffed so many times. Sometimes it was kind of working and then it just did this and we tried some different things with the rope as well. It was overall such a frustrating process, but hey, after two days of sleepless nights, we managed to finish the hook system once and for all. 
Was it worth it? I don't know, you tell me. And just a quick side note, we added the function to switch between building and actual hooking mode. The next thing on our list was the health bar. We just whipped up something that kind of symbolizes a heart, with some artistic touch to it. We imported the heart into the game and added the actual bar to it. Mayo can soon actually gain and lose health and it's an actual survival game and not just creative mode. We also scaled the UI down a bit cause it was a little big and this way the actual gameplay is more visible, you know? We quickly added the hunger and thirst bar. The hunger bar icon was just a placeholder cause our first draft of a simplistic version turned out like this. Instead we drew a simple potato that serves as the icon. That should be good enough for now. These are the three bars now. They're purely visual because the game doesn't have anything that could actually influence them. But this is the next and most exciting step in our opinion. Raft has these barrels that can give you materials or even food when you hook them. When the barrel gives you potatoes for example, you can either eat them or plant them to make more little potatoes. Trying to copy that as well, we drew the top of the barrel and made the drop rate similar to the original game. So you'll most likely get logs or planks, then plastic, and at last the potatoes. We don't have all the items, so we we can't exactly imitate the drop chance, but it's similar enough. That part was one of the easy ones, because we just had to tweak some of the numbers in Unity. To make the game actually survival -y, we added the potato as our only source of food. It's not a 5 star hotel, right? You're literally surviving on a raft. After some time, you'll lose points in your hunger bar. If you decide to ignore the bar and it drops below 20 points, you'll actually take damage. But you can of course eat potatoes that you find in barrels. We have this little tutorial how to eat for the slower people among us. We're not gonna add a planting or cooking system, that might be something to consider for part 2. The last remaining bar is the thirst bar, in normal raft you can get your water with a cup. You then have to purify it so it's actually drinkable. We're so generous and gave Mayo a cup that he doesn't even need to make on his own. You can just click E when you're at the edge of your raft and it will fill up your cup. We have this little indicator for that. Our budget doesn't allow us to make a purifier though, so Mayo just has to drink the salt water. So if he's thirsty, he can collect water and drink it with Q, which refills his thirst bar. Does it make sense in real life? No. Does it matter? No. With that finished, we've officially made the game survivally. Before giving Roberto a purpose in life, we polished the game a bit. It might not be the biggest thing for you guys, but we think it's pretty cool that switching between the tools has a little animation. I mean, look at that. And when building, there's also this little wiggle thing, which is pretty neat. The progress of this game so far was so good that we decided to completely ruin it with our sound effects that we added. It sounds kind of disgusting, but that's what makes it unique. Finally moving to Roberto. We previously established that he just randomly swims around. What we added was a collider. When the collider is activated and he randomly collides with a plank, he will destroy that part of the raft like in the original game. After that, the collider is deactivated for a while. It's pretty simple. We don't have the time or knowledge, to be honest, to create an insane AI that does some no. cool stuff. So we just gotta live with what we have and be grateful. And at least it works, right? The very last thing we needed to add was the night and day system. It was actually quite easy. We just had to move the light after a period of time. There were some bugs, such as a rave suddenly starting, but we managed to fix everything. And we think that's it. The finished copycat of Raft. And you gotta admit, it's pretty cozy. Of course we could add some more advanced stuff, but that would just ruin the coziness and simplistic touch of the game. So if you wanna see us make another game for Danny, you can click on this video.